Hello, my name is Karen Mattern. I'm one of the bereavement counselors with DNA Hospice. I want to welcome you to our holiday grief video. We lament the fact that we can't gather together again this holiday season to share some of our favorite tips and suggestions for helping you navigate the holidays during a very difficult season of loss. So in lieu of our gathering together, my teammates and I, who will also be sharing some thoughts on navigating the holidays, will present to you this morning just a few, hopefully, helpful suggestions to you as we know you are not only navigating the loss of your loved one, but you are doing so in the midst of a global pandemic. This has offered some very challenging and difficult aspects for you and for your family as you have been going through this experience. And so we hope that the VNA Hospice has been helpful on your journey as you have navigated the loss of your loved one. We are so sorry for your loss. And we recognize though that the beginning of the holiday season in the United States is ushered in by the start of the fall season. It's hard to believe here we are in November, but the excitement of the start of a new school year, coupled with the changing colors of deciduous trees in early September, the snap of cool crisp mornings and Macintosh apples in October, the comforting cozy blend of wood burning fires and soddened earth in November, and finally the sweet and savory taste of peppermints and eggnog in December are all indicative of the holiday season. We understand that the first year of navigating the loss of a significant loved one is steeped in a blur of distant memories, robotic task-oriented movements fueled often by well-meaning family and friends. There are awkward well wishes and invitations to holiday parties, stilted advice, that are from hardened widows or widowers, but well-meaning, all punctuated by the still unbelievable absence of your loved one. We understand that cherished family gatherings, heralded cultural traditions, and familiar matriarchal and patriarchal roles are vacated by those now deceased. And they are emblematic of the future holidays that you may go through. So what can you look forward to? We hope that these are a few suggestions to help you navigate the days and the months ahead. So wherever you are, make a plan where you would like to spend the holidays. Inform others of your preferences, but be flexible and please accept your limitations. We also encourage that you adjust your expectation of yourself and from others, and you can begin new traditions and let some old ones go, knowing that this will be different for you. Give yourself permission to express your feelings during the holidays. Allow yourself to cry, but also allow yourself to laugh as you share stories of you and your loved ones. Decorate the burial site or place flowers near the area where you may have spread your loved one's ashes. Music can also be a very difficult emotional trigger, but allow yourself the opportunity to share those favorite songs and enjoy the music that you and your loved ones had once enjoyed together. Also, it's important that if you like to give a monetary gift in honor of your loved one or in your family, your family would like to give one to your loved one's favorite charity or favorite cause. It's also helpful during this, the, uh, the opportunity during the ceremony or the, the dinner that you host to light a candle in honor of your loved one. You may like to say a prayer or share a poem. And please, I hope you can avoid the all or nothing thinking. Every hour does not need to be joyful nor sorrowful. Um, it can be filled with activity, um, but don't overdo. Avoid that should, those should statements, which often lead to guilt, regret, and exhaustion, which you don't need any more of. And finally, if you can, drive yourself to any of the holiday events. If you feel you need to, to leave prematurely, 
then you'll not feel obliged to burden someone else with an early departure. So finally, just please recognize that the holiday season will be different. We understand that. It does not mean you have to be all joyful or all sorrowful. Just do what you would like to do and allow yourself to feel what you need to feel, surrounding yourself with non-judgmental family and friends. And remember, the holidays will come around next year. You can always celebrate them in a different way next year. We hope that wherever you are and whomever you're with, that your holidays will be filled with loving memories of you and your loved one. Thank you for joining us today. And I will pass on now to my colleagues, Becky, Mary Beth, Melissa, and our music therapist, Lauren. Thank you so much for sharing today and happy holidays. Hi, my name is Becky Jacobson. I'm one of the bereavement counselors with the VNA. The concept of gratitude has become well discussed in the last few years because of the benefits that have been attributed to it. Studies have shown that people who regularly express their feelings of gratitude have higher levels of well being, are happier, more satisfied with their life and relationships, report more joy, and have lower levels of stress. But what about gratitude and grief? It almost seems that those two words are incongruent mental states. Surprisingly, grief and gratitude are supportive of each other. A grief expert put it this way, with gratitude, we can embrace our grief and burn it as fuel for our journey. It's a way to reinstate joy into our daily lives as we grieve. I think what this means is that weaving gratitude into our journey as we grieve can buoy us and nurture our hearts. Even though our brains are not wired to be thankful when we are suffering, we can move through our grief more purposefully by focusing on the expression of gratitude. One specific way we can express gratitude during grief might be by writing a letter to our loved one and expressing what we loved about them, how they changed us, and what they taught us. Another way of focusing on gratitude is by looking at grief through the lens of making grief a gift, even an unwanted gift, but nonetheless one that we would not have if we had not had deep love and connections to that person who's no longer with us. Learning to express gratitude on a regular basis takes discipline and motivation. Starting to practice gratitude in small ways, like being grateful for a sunny day, that individual who let you go ahead of them in line on your busy lunch hour, or that negative test result received, you can find that it will lead to larger, more meaningful ones that can close the gap between pain and peace and between grief and joy. Someone put it eloquently when they said, gratitude is a gift we can give ourselves, a warm blanket we wrap around our tender hearts to comfort and nurture ourselves. Practicing gratitude is a gift we can give ourselves this holiday season. Hello, I'm Mary Beth Intricasso, and I'm a hospice bereavement counselor. The holidays can be a real challenge for those who have endured the loss of a loved one. Something that might offer some comfort is the practice of self-compassion. Self-compassion is the ability to turn acceptance and love inward. It's responding to ourselves the way that we would respond to a friend in need. Self-compassion is not self-indulgence and it's not selfishness. Rather, it's the thoughtful or mindful act of caring or nurturing for all facets of ourself. When we accept our flaws, forgive ourselves, and show ourselves kindness, we're practicing self-compassion. Pause. Can you pause? Yeah, we'll just keep it rolling and you can go whenever. Let's think of ourselves as being comprised of five facets or realms, physical, emotional, cognitive, spiritual, and social. If it helps, you can use your hand, remember. 
Self-compassion of our physical realm means maintaining a wholesome diet, resting when we're tired, getting enough sleep, going for a walk, or just spending time outdoors. It sounds simple enough, but during the holidays and when you're grieving, we might forget to take care of our own needs. Try to create and adhere to a healthy daily routine. Make you a priority. Nurturing our emotional self means acknowledging and expressing our emotions. This is essential to healing. For some, expressing emotions might be talking with a friend or family member or even a counselor. For others, it might be writing poetry, journaling, uh, painting, or playing a musical instrument. A good cry is also a way of releasing emotions. Be honest with your close friends. There's no need to pretend you're okay when you're not. In caring for our cognitive self, we want to be mindful of how we think about ourselves and what we say to ourselves. Don't be critical. Don't be hard on yourself. It's impossible to recreate past holidays because your loved one's not there. Be gentle and encouraging and do what feels best for you during the holidays. A practical suggestion is to keep a calendar and a notebook handy, to write important things down. In grief and during the holidays, we can easily be distracted and forgetful. Written reminders can help. Whatever your beliefs, there are many ways to nurture your spiritual self. You might pray, attend services, practice meditation, read spiritually based literature, or connect with nature. You might talk to God or write letters to your loved one. Author and educator Alan Wolfelt writes that we can set the tone for the day by repeating a simple prayer to ourselves by meditating or expressing gratitude as part of our morning routine. Please seek and find what provides you solace and hope and embrace it. Turning now to our social realm, humans are social beings. Connecting with others promotes our sense of belonging and well-being. It's true that some relationships may change after a death, but often it's because people don't know how to act, they don't know what to say, and they're afraid of making a mistake. We may feel broken in our sorrow, but there's nothing to be fixed. Grief is part of life, Grief is the cost of love. Healing will occur on everyone's own schedule. There will be people who understand grief and care about you. These are your safe people. Try to remember to ask them for what you need. It may just be to be present and listen. With regard to holiday gatherings, only the grieving person can decide what they're comfortable doing. If you accept an invitation and then later change your mind, it's okay. Grief is unpredictable and you can't know from one day to the next how you'll be. So just to recap, acknowledge that the holidays will be different without your loved one. Honor and prioritize your bereavement needs. Respond with self-compassion and be good to yourself.
Thank you. Music has a strong effect on our emotions. It can validate our feelings, help us process what we're going through, or even help us move from one emotion to another. It can be a wonderful tool for coping with our grief. During the holidays, music brings many nostalgic memories that can be both painful and joyful as we remember our loved ones. It can be helpful to recognize how the music affects you so that you can either use it to help provide comfort or avoid it if needed. We'd like to share with you a song written by one of our VNA's music therapists, Lauren Meeks, in hopes that it will help provide you some comfort during the holidays as we remember those that we have lost. I can't believe the holidays are coming round again. The silent nights have never been so silent before. Day to day I'm finding a new normal without you. But this year I'm afraid my Christmas will be blue. I wish I had you here to bake the cookies and the turkey, to watch the football games and sing our favorite songs, and faking smiles to show that I'm not sad as I seem. I know this year you're home for Christmas, only in my dreams. But thank you for the memories of holidays before. is full. Your love is floating through the air like snow on Christmas Eve. At the holidays it helps to be together as we grieve. I promise that we'll let the children know how much you love them. The adults still laugh at all your jokes in the evening by the fire, though everything feels different as it comes around this year, but since you're in our memories, it's almost like you're here, so thank you for the memories of holidays before, your place at the table might be empty, but my heart is full. Your love is floating through the air like snow on Christmas Eve. At the holidays, it helps to be together as we grieve. At the holidays, it helps to be together as we grieve. are traditionally a time for families to gather. For many, children are at the center of these gatherings who, like the adults in their lives, are missing their loved one. Some may feel compelled to continue with traditions started long ago for the sake of the children, or may not even know how to celebrate the holidays following the death. Including the whole family in the planning of the holidays can alleviate the pressure off of one person and allow it for an open discussion of what everyone is comfortable in doing. Children experience many emotions after the death of a loved one. Openly discussing and sharing these emotions allows them to feel comfortable and less isolated in their experience. Avoid minimizing these emotions or attempting to encourage them and only thinking of happy thoughts during the holidays. Instead, allow for them to freely express their emotions, share that they are natural, and tell them that they are what you are feeling as well. The one place that a loved one continues to live on in are our memories. Holiday gatherings are a good place for family members to share these treasured memories. 
Create spaces of time for children to share why they are grateful for their loved one or to share their favorite memories of them or even to remember the loved one's favorite tradition. The sharing of these memories can bring forth other memories and allow for the family to connect during this time. Traditions are a big part of the holidays and are how we connect the past to the present. After the death of a loved one, it may feel difficult to continue with some traditions that they were a part of, or instead you may want to consider starting new traditions that acknowledge them. Your child may like being a part of starting these new traditions as a way of remembering them. Some families may light a candle, place favorite pictures of the loved one, prepare a favorite dish, or even leave, leave a bowl of the loved one's favorite candy out for everyone to enjoy. While they seem like small things to do, it is a way for your child to remain connected to them during this time. However your family chooses to recognize the holidays, do whatever feels good to you and your children. Putting unnecessary pressures on yourself will only add to the family stress. Do only as much as you are comfortable in doing. For more information on the VNA's bereavement support, check out our website at vnatc.com.